Section 8.2 was on multiplying and dividing radicals. So let's look at this first example to get an understanding of this first property. So if I look at the left hand side right here to follow order of operations, I would multiply on the inside. 4 times 25 is 100. So I've got the square root of 100 and that's 10. Alright, now that's equal to if I look at the right hand side to follow order of operations, I'm going to take the square root of each one and then multiply. The square root of 4 is 2 the square root of 25 is 5, and 2 times 5 is 10. So just through one example, we were able to verify that this is true, and this property is called the product rule for square roots. The product rule says that if you have the square root of the product of two numbers, that can be separated to be the square root of each of the numbers multiplied together. Okay, so I can separate two numbers that are inside that are a product inside of a square root into the product of the two square roots. Or vice versa, if I have the product of two square roots, I can rewrite that as the square root of a single product. Okay, so this is the product rule for square roots. We're going to use this product rule to simplify square root expressions. So for example, the square root of 2 times the square root of 7 could be written as the square root of 14. The square root of 3x times the square root of 5y could be written as the square root of 3 times 5 is 15xy. And the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 could be written as the square root of 25 or just 5. Notice that it's a different way of writing this. We could write this as the square root of 5 squared which then also is just 5. Okay, so the square root of x times x, that's the square root of x squared, which is x, but the same property right here. Okay, and in example 2, we're going to look at that property again. If I have the square root of 7 squared, it's 7. The square root of 18 squared is 18. And the square root of negative 5 squared is 5. It would be positive, right? Because this negative is going to be squared along with the square root of 5. Alright, so it doesn't matter where the square is placed or the square root is placed, if the square root is on the inside or if the square root is on the outside. Squares and square roots are opposite operations, so if you're squaring and square rooting, you're going to get back to the original number with a little bit of exceptions because negatives might not come back. That makes sense. If the negative is on the outside, when I square, I will get a positive. However, if it's written as the square root of negative 5, like this, squared, that will be positive, oh, sorry, that will be negative 5, okay? Because this square is going to hit the square root, it's not going to hit that negative. This negative is inside the square, and so on, okay? So two negatives there, only one here. Objective 2, simplifying square roots. Okay, so a square root is simplified when a radicand does not have any perfect square factors. So if we look at the square root of 18, I don't know the square root of 18. I know the square root of 16 is 4, but I can't take the square root of 18. However, 18 does have a perfect square factor. That is, I could write 18 as 9 times 2 inside the radicand property that we just saw is going to allow us to separate this and write it as the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. I do know how to take the square root of 9, that's 3. So 3 times the square root of 2 is the simplified radical. Okay, It had a perfect square factor because I could find a perfect square, 9 namely in this case, that divided evenly into 18, and I was able to separate that into the product of two square roots, take the square or the perfect square factor. Those are my steps here. So 20, uh, 20 is 2 times 10, doesn't matter because neither of those is a perfect square, so let's write it as 4 times 5. I know the square root of 4 is 2, I can't take the square root of 5, so that would be the simplified version. Okay, 50. 50 is 25 times 2. I'm going to write this as the square root of 25 and the square root of 2t. I'm going to leave the t with the 2. This is the part that I can't take the square root of. And I put the 25 first because that's the part that I can take the square root of. So it's going to simplify to 5 times the square root of 2t. 
All right. And in the next one, we have 3 times the square root of 28x. 28 is 4 times 7. So I'm going to write that as the square root of 4 times the square root of 7x. Again, I know the square root of 4, so that's why I put that number first. I don't know the square root of 7, so I put that one last. So this is going to be 3 times the square root of 4 is 2, times the square root of, we don't know the square root of 7, so leave it as the square root of 7. For our final answer of 3 times 2 is 6, square root of 7x. Okay. So just paying attention to this one again, I separated it into a product of two things that multiplied to 28, 4 times 7 is 28, then we took the square root of 4 because we know the square root of 4, and we left the square root of 7 alone because we don't know the square root of 7, so it's still in its square root. All right, so as a summary right here, this is what we've been doing. To simplify a square root, um, oh, no, this isn't what we've been doing. My bad. This is to simplify a square root that has large factors. Okay, so like what, the 150 right here. Okay, so a couple of ways we can do this. The, the first way we might want to do this is to list a couple of things that go into the 150 or prime, the prime factorization of the 150. So I'm going to start that way, like make a little factor tree right here and say like, I know it's 15 and 10, but those aren't perfect squares. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to keep breaking it down and just look for repeated factors. Any repeated factor is an indication of a perfect square that goes into it. Okay. So I've got this perfect square right here because I've got the repeated factor. Then I've got this right here. Okay. The two and the three are not repeated. Okay. This means that 150 is 25 times 6. Okay, and I didn't know that off the top of my head. I knew it was 15 times 10, but I separate it down into smaller factors so that I can use the square root property on the rearranged version. So I've got 5 square root of 6. Okay, so let's try this again. 360, so that's 36 and 10. Um, 36 is a perfect square. 10 is 2 and 5, which aren't going to help me out at all. So I'm going to go with the 36 and the 2 and the 5. So we'll write this as the square root of 36 times the square root of 10. So this is 6 square root of 10. Okay. Alright, let's look at the next one. 19. Nothing goes into 19. Okay, so the 19 is done, but I do need to do the square root of x squared. So this is the square root of 19 times the square root of x squared. I know the square root of x squared is x, and I can't take the square root of 19, so I'm going to leave it as the square root of 19. Whenever we have something that's not inside of a square root, it's going to be written first, and the square root is always written last. All right. In the case of the next one, 8 can be broken down into the square root of 4 times the square root of 2, and then we have our square root of x squared. So the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 2 I can't take. So I would write this as 4x square root of 2. All right, in the next one, 45 is 9 times 5, so square root of 9, square root of 5, and square root of a to the 6th. Okay. Now, if I start with the 9, the square root of 9 is 3. Let's think about the a's for a second. Square root of a to the 6th. Okay, let me go on the top of the page right here. a to the 6th. Okay. What would I have to have squared to get me a to the sixth. Remember that these powers right here multiply, so if I had a to the third squared, it would be a to the sixth. So the square root of a to the sixth better give me the opposite of squaring, so better give me a to the third. Okay. When you multi when you uh, raise it to a power you multiply, so it makes sense that when you do the opposite of the power, the, the square root, you're going to be dividing. So we divided by 2 to take the square root of the exponent. So 
the square root of a to the sixth is a to the third. Switch my color back. And I don't know the square root of five. Okay. Let's try the next one. 75. That's like quarters, so I know you could have three quarters, so that's 25 times three. Square root of t squared and square root of w cubed. Okay, so 25. Square root of 25 is five. I can't do the square root of three, so I'm gonna skip that for a second. Square root of t squared is t. Now about this w cubed, can I do the square root of w cubed? Okay. Well, not quite, but I could separate it. So let me write this right now as square root of three, square root of w cubed. It's not as visible by two, right? But if I write it as w squared times w, then I'll be able to take the square root of this part. And remember that when you're multiplying them, two plus one is three, they add up. Okay, so I'm going to separate that one. So this is going to be 5t w square root of, now these two things are left. We're left with 3 and w inside the square root. So my final answer is square root of 5t w square root of 3w. Okay, so adding to our list up here, this works when the power that I'm taking the square root of is even, but if it's odd, if you take the square root of a to the 11th, for example, you would separate that into the square root of one fewer, so a to the 10th, times the square root of a, because 10 and one more is 11. So then if you divide the even one by two, you'll have one left over. Okay, just for an example, again, this is what I'll do if it's even. Just divide it by two, and if it's odd, split one off, and then divide the even part by two. All right, so our last one here. Okay, um, let's see. I can't do anything with the 15 by itself or with the five by itself. So let's just go ahead and combine this into one larger. Okay, five times 15 is, let's see, five times five is 25, carry the two, so 75, okay? Uh, and x to the fourth times x to the ninth is x to the 13th. So I combined them, now I'm gonna split them down into a product of perfect squares. So 75, so we're gonna do 25 times three. And for the x's, we're gonna do x to the 12 times x for 13. So this will be 25, the square root of 25 is five. The square root of x to the 12th is gonna be x to the sixth. And left over will be the square root of three x. So five x to the sixth, square root of three x. Okay, let's stop here and we'll start objective three in the next one.